We all own a pair of sneakers, and many of us own multiple pairs. For a specific physical activities, we wear different pairs. We will wear them all the time when we're outside. We will also buy certain sneakers based on its appearance. Why is it that different sports require different footwear? Why is there such a wide variety of sneakers when the differences on the sneakers are very minimal? A sneaker complements an athlete, and to many, having a specific pair of sneakers on them will help enhance their performance, making them win whatever sport they're competing in. Welcome to the video talking about all things physics and sneakers. My goal today is to educate you on all the things required in the physics of sneakers. You will learn about the advantage that sneaker gives you, as well as educate you on the sneakers you're wearing right now. So let's begin. First, let's talk about foot arches and shoe inserts. Many athletes don't have perfect feet. In fact, 40% of humans don't have a normal foot arch. If you don't have a normal foot arch, you either have a high arch or a low arch. Pronation is a term used by orthopedics as well as runners. It's the natural movement of the foot that happens when landing on impact through running and walking, or any movement for that matter involving feet, of course. Overpronation is common in low arch feet, as underpronation is common in high arch feet. The easiest solution to be able to pronate normally is to visit an orthopedic and get a custom insole for your feet. This will help pronation and avoid injuries. One of the most common injuries is plantar fasciitis. This is when the plantar ligament, tissue running from your heel to your toe, gets swollen. Although this is common in middle-aged people, why is it important? Let's understand the physics behind it. As we run, we land on our heels and take off on our toes. When on our heels, our whole heel isn't being used. We roll on the outer edge of the heels and land on the balls of our feet. Since sneakers are an extension of our feet, having sneakers that mimic this design will help them be more comfortable. Many sneakers will be raised near the heel and curved upwards near the toe. Skateboarding shoes such as Vans and Converse are uncomfortable for this reason, along with having a thick rubber sole at the bottom. It may not be the best for running, but they're perfect for skateboarding. As you constantly move your feet on the grip tape, which is similar to sandpaper, and have your other foot push off on the concrete, the friction between these two surfaces shaves away the rubber. Having a thick sole means it'll take much longer for the sole of the shoe to wear out. What's also important to understand is what goes on as we take steps. It doesn't take much to think about walking, however, once you're able to understand the physics of walking, it can help athletes perform much better. When you take a step, you push backwards on the ground. The static friction of the ground opposes the attempted motion of your foot and exerts a simultaneous and opposite force that propels you forwards. A sprinter tries to maximize the forwards force of the ground. This means wearing shoes that have the large force of static friction with the running surface. If the angle of the sprinter relative to the ground is too small, they will fall forward. A sprinter has to be aware of his or her center of gravity and try not to extend beyond that. The optimal angle for a sprinter is relative to the ground is 44 degrees. But that's how we take steps. Now let's talk about two common types of running intensive sports, sprinting and marathon running, and the different techniques that will be used in these sports. Sprinting is all about producing the maximum amount of force possible in the short distance race. Marathon running is all about conserving and stretching out that energy and force for as long as necessary. Choosing the right pair of sneakers can also be a factor of shaving out your running time. When running, our feet expand, creating a larger landing surface, the bottom of our feet. Marathon running shoes have to account for this, and the benefit of a larger platform on a shoe is for balance. It's easier to walk in regular shoes versus high heels, of course. Our distance races are all about using all the energy you have to make sure you cross the finish line in first place. Most races take less than 30 seconds to complete. Sprinting shoes often sacrifice comfort for a more lightweight shoe. Adding unnecessary weight may hinder your world record time. Shoes for running marathons are completely different. Marathons take upwards of 2 hours to complete and the last thing you want to worry about are cramps or pain in your feet. Shoes still will be lightweight, however, more attention will be paid to create a more bouncy, flexible midsole to return energy to its maximum abilities. Now let's talk about sneakers along with their different intended purposes. When looking for the perfect pair of shoes, it's very important to know what you're looking for. Many athletes are lucky enough to get their own signature athletic shoes specific to their individual needs along with their playing style. For example, Kyrie Irving. Due to his signature cuts and crosses in the game, his shoes call for a very unique type of grip, wrapping upwards along the outsole. This provides him with the grip he needs to perform without having to worry about falling over. It's also rounded so he's able to bounce on the sides of his shoes. When performing crosses at high speeds, if the edges weren't rounded, it will cause Kyrie to lose his balance due to the edges having a small surface area. Soccer cleats are designed with studs at the bottom as grip. It pierces the ground as you apply your weight on it, and the studs sink into the ground. 
Different styles of studs will be for different purposes. For example, long studs are used on wet grass for more grip as it will penetrate deeper in the ground. Multiple short studs spread across the bottom of the shoe is meant for dry hard surfaces like a dirt field. Their purpose isn't to pierce the ground but to still provide grip. If the regular soccer cleat would be used, not only would it be harder to pierce the ground, but it would be harder to balance as the studs aren't being used properly. Lastly, hockey skates are very unique. Many think of skating blades as one single sharp blade like a knife, but many don't know that they're actually hollow below, allowing for two points of contact per ice skate. This is meant to help with balance along with steering of the blade. Different curve radiuses will determine how the skate will handle. A smaller curve radius will mean more grip for the skate. A 3 8 inch curve radius allows for the maximum grip, however you're sacrificing speed. Adidas and Nike are two of the most successful sneaker companies in the world, and I'm very sure both companies are very familiar to everyone. Let's discuss two of their most comfortable shoe technologies, Nike Air and Adidas Boost, along with their pros and cons. Nike's most recent addition to its line of signature Nike Air sneakers is the Nike Vapor Max, shooting full length air, which has never been seen before. As you will notice, there are many separate units of air making up the outsole of the shoe. There's also grip on the outer edges where pronation occurs. All of these units have different densities of air. The heel is a lot less dense compared to the toes air unit. This allows for the force of landing on your heel to be absorbed and for it to be released when you're moving off your toes. This gives the user a bouncy feel which makes the whole experience of wearing the sneakers a lot more comfortable. Adidas Boost is very new compared to Nike Air which has been around since 1987. However, this 2016 creation has really revolutionized the shoe's comfort aspect. Adidas Boost is able to take over 12 tons of pressure while still being able to retract to its original shape as if nothing ever happened to it. This shows the shoe's durability. Boost is made up of thermoplastic polyurethane pods melted and compressed down into the shoe's midsole. These small pods are very bouncy and elastic thus making the shoe's midsole very comfortable. Comparing the Vapormax to the Adidas Ultra Boost, the Vapormax is far lighter due to the fact that it's composed of very lightweight materials. The flattened upper gives the shoe a snug and stock-like feel and the sole is a durable TPU plastic field with Nike's secret formula of gas called Nike Air. Nike Air also has the advantage of changing the pressure and its unique gas mixture to their specific needs. On a different models of Nike Air shoes, the air has been placed in different spots, mainly around the heels. Different pressures and mixtures will be used in different purposes. However, Nike doesn't disclose what Nike Air is composed of. The advantage of Adidas has over Nike is the shoe's lifespan. Nike Air capsules can pop, and once they pop, the shoes become very hard to wear. Adidas Boost is protected in a rubber cage to prolong its lifespan, and priming it upper makes the shoe very comfortable, similar to Nike's flying material. However, many prefer priming it as it's far more soft and breathable. Sneakers can be used for long periods of time before having to throw them out. So it's the best to do your research to pick the perfect pair for you, so consider what you'll be using the sneaker for. As we learned, different sneakers will have different purposes. If you're going to be on your feet for a very long time and want something lightweight and comfortable, I highly recommend the Adidas Boost line. In terms of athletic footwear, it all comes down to personal preference. Whether it's basketball or soccer, find a shoe that fits your needs along with the environments you'll be playing in. Also note that certain sneakers can only be used for that sport. You can't wear regular shoes to skate. I hope everyone was able to take something away from this video. Thank you for watching.